hello everyone so welcome back i hope you are all doing really really well and that you've had a nice good as chilled as possible weekend and that you're ready to start fresh here on monday so we're having a bit of a change of scenery today we are not in the pink room for once which uh, is probably quite refreshing to most of you but um yes we're in here filming today mainly because my neighbors are playing classical music so loudly that's you know as lovely as that is i would uh, definitely be getting a copyright claim for if i were to film in there so here we are today i'm kind of doing a follow-up to the video that i posted last week which was a declutter of my makeup collection so i went through my entire collection i say entire it was just one drawer of makeup i have to remember now that my makeup is not what it used to be but i kind of just wanted to organize it number one because it was very messy um and streamline it a little bit because there were definitely things in there that were either past their sell by dates or hadn't been used for months and months um so i was really happy with the way that turned out you can go and watch that video i'll link up here if you haven't already um but in that i kind of mentioned that i keep my everyday makeup in a separate makeup bag which is this here now i didn't actually get round to filming the declutter of this in that video because I think by that point we were kind of running at about three hours of footage and I just needed to stop. So I thought I'd save it for a separate video and declutter this with you guys today. It's really heavy actually. Uh, and my makeup bag is kind of like the black abyss where things never really reemerge from. There's probably a lot of empty products in here that I could do with just throwing out because they don't work anymore. Uh, probably quite a lot of duplicates of things in here because I'll pick up a blusher and think, oh, I'll use this today and just chuck it in there uh, when I've already got six. And also likewise with my actual makeup collection, I kind of just want to streamline this, keep it simple. I know what I use every day and I know what I don't. So we're gonna go through this, sort it out, and hopefully I'll have a nice organized makeup bag by the end of this. So here is the makeup bag in question. I had a few uh, of you guys wondering where this was actually from. It's by a brand called Elizabeth Scarlet. Uh, I'm not sure they're just specifically a makeup bag brand, but they do a lot of this very um, embroidered, decorative style homeware thing. So um, it's actually a great makeup bag. I prefer just a huge bag that I can chuck things into rather than things with compartments, unless I'm actually traveling. So um, it's a pretty sizable one. So I think my best plan of action with this is just to get everything out, separate it into categories, and then we can go from there. So that is what I'm gonna do first. Is a ridiculous pile of makeup honestly it's like the TARDIS in there um, so I've tried to separate everything out maybe not quite so successfully but we're just gonna roll with this and go through what we have first of all I'm gonna put these in the wash these disposable reusable cotton pads I don't know why these are in here I think I sometimes use them to kind of take makeup swatches off my hands if I'm playing around with makeup something like that I don't know they're gonna go in the wash immediately so I've kind of put all my brushes over here I'm surprised at how many brushes are in this makeup bag considering I use one for my face, one for my powder and maybe one for my brows. I'm gonna go and wash all of these I think because they could do with a good wash. I try and wash my brushes every Sunday so they're probably due um, a little rinse. What I am going to keep in here for sure is my beauty sponge, my beauty blender. I'm gonna wash this too, um, but usually I use it dry like that. I'm gonna keep the Real Techniques buffing brush because it's my ride or die, I use that for everything. And then I do need the, uh, what is this? It's a MAC 266 angle brush, which is what I'm using um, for my brows at the moment. Normally I'd use a brow pencil, but I don't have any at the moment, so that's what I'm doing. Um, the rest of these, actually, I do need this little one here, which is the Zoeva 134 Luxe Powder Fusion. I use that for my powder. And then these are kind of like optional ones. So the fan brush, I kind of tried this out the other day and I really liked it, but I don't often use powder highlighter, which is what I tried it for. Uh, this was used in a makeup video. This is one of my all-time favorite concealer brushes. I'm just not kind of into the brush application for concealer right now. Doesn't mean to say I won't be in the future. Um, but this is from Sephora, it's the 57 Airbrush Concealer. These are so amazing. I don't actually think the UK can order from Sephora at the moment because of 
I'm not even sure why. I think it has something to do with Brexit, which is a bit crap. But this range of brushes from Sephora is great. Um, I do occasionally use this Charlotte Tilbury. I think this is the Powder and Sculpt. All the names have rubbed off my powder brushes because they've been in here. I use this sometimes if I want to powder my whole face, but that's not very often. Again, with this one, I'll use this when I've got like powder, bronzers and powder cheek products, but that is not very often. Oh, and actually this one I do use most days. It's an Anastasia eyeshadow brush and it's double-ended. Normally I don't really rate double-ended brushes because you can never stack them in things, but this is the perfect brush for doing a bit of eyeshadow on the lid and then underneath the bottom lashes. It's kind of like perfect for everyday eye makeup. So these can go back in my drawer. I don't need those right now. And these ones can stay, but we'll be going for a quick little shampoo because uh, they could probably do with it. I've actually ended up with two pairs of eyelash colors in here. Um, these are, I've got the Kevin Aucoin eyelash color and the Chanel lash color. Now I kind of thought very naively that you know, all lash curlers were made equal, but that is definitely not the case. These are quite different. Um, the Chanel ones, I think, are definitely for bigger eyes, whereas the Kevin Aucoin ones, they're just a little bit smaller, they're a bit thinner, and I find I can get so much deeper into the root with these ones. Not to say I don't like the Chanel ones, first of all, they're beautiful, um, but they give a different look, so I've kind of been like, using both of these, swapping between the two. Um, I think for every day though, I'm gonna have to keep the Kevin Aucoin ones in there because they're just a lot more what I want from an everyday look. So those are gonna stay. I'm putting everything back into the makeup bag as I go, just so that I know I have space for what I'm gonna be uh, using. Another random thing I found in there was this hair uh, slide, hair brush. I actually use this to um, center my parting because it has really little spiky bits along here. I should probably just get myself like a rat tail comb, which is, you know, what you're supposed to do with that. Okay, let's start from the beginning. So let's go for bases and primers. We've got a couple of things here. Okay, so we've got the NARS. Um, I, I've done it again, I've forgotten the name. Tinted Glow Booster. I use it every day and I can't remember what it's called. We've got the Clarins Beauty Flash Balm, the Origins Pretty in Bloom Foundation, the Becca Backlit Priming Filter, and then we have Glossier Future Drew in this very sweet mini. Obviously the NARS is going to stay. I use this every day, like I said, it's the perfect there but not there base. Super light coverage. Um, but evens out my skin perfectly. I have this on today and I love it. I've also been trying out this Origins Pretty and Bloom foundation. It's an SPF 20 flower infused long wear foundation. I'm not really a foundation girl anymore, but I wanted to give this a try because I love Origins and I haven't used their makeup for a really long time. I have to say I like it. It's definitely a lot more of a coverage than I'm used to. For some, this is probably still nothing at all, but for me, um, who just does not go near foundation, this is quite a bit. It still looks very natural though, so I kind of enjoyed wearing this. It looked um, really perfecting and really flawless, but still like my skin, so I've, I've been reaching for that a couple of times. I'm gonna keep it in my makeup bag though, because I really wanna try it out and see um, if I definitely love it, because so far, it's so good. So I'm gonna keep those two base products. I have, you know, every option there from light to full coverage. And then the primers. Um, I don't know why this Clarins Beauty Flash Balm is in here because it's not something I use a lot at all. I think I reached for this the other day because I wanted something really hydrating. And this is a cool product because it, it really like tightens your skin when you put it on. It's very special occasion type makeup. If you just want everything to look very firm and flawless and hydrated, this is great but it's not something I'm gonna reach for every day. So I think I'm gonna put that away. Um, this, on the other hand, is something I put on all the time. It's the Glossier Future Dew. This is so interesting. It's like an oil, serum, moisturizer, primer thing. So different to anything else I own. Um, it kind of comes out like a little bit pink. And then as you blend it, it just disappears, but it gives the most gorgeous, glow. I've, oh, the smell. I forgot how good this smells. To me, it smells like rosemary, which is kind of strange, but that's what my nose is picking up. Um, so this, I use nearly every day. I'll use this when I'm wearing makeup um, as a base. Everything goes on so much more dewy and beautiful when I have this on. I'll use it as well on a no makeup day when I just want my skin to look really fresh. There's nothing in here pigment wise. It is just very glowy and sheeny. So it makes me look quite healthy even if I'm not feeling it. So then the Becca Backlit Priming Filter, it has a very similar effect, but it is more so a makeup. This one 
if I swatch it on my hand as well, trying not to use too much because it's very intense. Um, this one is much more like, oh, can you see that? Look at the glow. Look at the shimmer, beautiful. Love this a lot, but probably not something I'm gonna use every day. Um, so that can just go back into my uh, makeup drawer and I'll pull it out when I need it and I'm doing something a bit more glowy and special. Okay, next let's do concealer. I've got one, I've got two, I've got three. Obviously the Glossier Stretch Concealer will be staying. This is my daily go-to concealer. In fact, if I had to pick one makeup product to wear, it would be this. I have the shade G11, in case anybody was wondering. It's not the lightest. Um, they really have improved their shade range recently, and I love the way they've done their colors. If you look at the way it goes from one to 11, the darkest shades are actually at one, and the lightest are at 11, and I think that's a nice change, because if you think about it, it is always the opposite, and I'm not sure why. So that's cool, Glossier. Definitely keeping you. Um, and then we kind of have two very similar concealers. These are both full full coverage we have the nars radiant creamy concealer and then this one from hourglass i think it's the vanish concealer i like to have a full coverage concealer in my makeup bag just in case there is something that really is being very persistent and not wanting to be covered um i've been trying out this hourglass one recently and i do like it i just think it is a little bit drying compared to the nars one this one is also a better color for me it's not quite so yellowy toned um, and all full coverage concealers are gonna be just a little bit dry, um, but I feel like this one is just that tiny bit better, so gonna keep that one in there. Powders, I have quite a few powders in here actually, uh, and bronzer products, cheek, cheek, more cream bronzer, more cream bronzer, highlighter there as well, and another highlighter actually, there we go. This is definitely a little bit silly, um, where should we start? Okay, this is gonna stay. This is my powder of choice, uh, now and forever. This is the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Finish Skin Perfecting Micro Powder in Fair. I always like to say that full name because it makes me feel fancy. Um, I have used this for years. This is probably, I was trying to work this out the other day. This is probably my, I'm gonna say fifth one of these, which, you know, for a girl that never used to wear powder is saying quite a lot. And I, I don't think I ever really use products up other than mascaras and concealers. There's nothing that I really go all the way through. So it always feels like quite an achievement to me. I can't be alone in that when I actually use something up. It means I love it a lot. So bronzers next. I actually have this one and it's been sitting in my makeup bag for so long and I keep meaning to try it and I keep not reaching for it or forgetting that it's there. This is from Huda Beauty and it's called the Tantor Contour and Bronze Cream. So this to me is kind of like um, Huda Beauty's take on the Chanel Soleil de Tan. I am a massive lover of that product as well as a cream bronzer. And I thought this would be cool because it does actually come in different shades, whereas the Chanel one is literally just one color. This is the light, um, which, you know, for Huda Beauty standards, light is never really that light. I must give this a go, and I feel like the only way I'm gonna do that is if I keep it in my makeup bag. The only problem is this feels quite matte, and with the other two cream bronzers I have in here, or the other three, actually, they're all very, like, glossy and glowy and dewy, and that's what I really prefer. So I'm gonna put that one in there, because I have, I have to use it just to see if I like it or not. So then, these three, I'm gonna start with these two, because they're kind of like my massive massive go-to's we've got the Clinique chubby stick sculpting contour which I have to say this is probably a little bit gross to admit I have never repurchased it and it's still going I wouldn't say strong that's how much is left I've twisted it all the way up and that is it but it works for me I use it every day it's what really got me into cream bronzer and I just adore it and then we have the Shantikai, um radiance gel bronzer very similar although it comes out in a gel so it's really liquidy and actually quite sheer too so you know you put a ton of it on like that but it's really easy to blend out and you never really go over the top with it i probably do not need both of these <laughs> in my makeup bag but i just want to keep them um what is going to be the smartest thing to do is to use this one up and then go on to the shantikai so i'll put this one in my makeup bag for now um you know i've probably got another couple of months in there because i've had this for years and it's still going so <laughs> We'll see. And then this one is um, a bronzing stick that I've been using more recently. It's the Nude Sticks Nudies Matte All Over Face Bronze Color in Beach Babe. This is very different. Um, it's a very like ready toned bronzer. 
to the point where I use this in a makeup video, um, my how to cheat glowing skin video, which you can watch up here. And a lot of you thought I'd mix this up with the blusher and put the wrong thing on. Um, that is just the colour of it. It's a very, very ready kind of bronzer. But that's what I love so much about it. This on my skin looks so natural. It looks like I've kind of got a little bit of a sunburn, which isn't great. And we don't want to do that in real life. But if we can fake it, I'm on board. Um, so I do think it's very different to this Clinique one. Hence why I will keep it in there. I have another one of the Nudies Matte. Um, this is actually an all over face blush color. And you can tell this one's a bit more beaten up. I use this every single day. This is my go-to blush. This one is in Salty Siren, which is like the perfect, look at that, peach coral blush. I'm obsessed with it. This is actually from their collaboration with Estee. Love everything that girl touches. You are staying for sure. Uh, and then actually I do have two blushes in here, which are powders. I've got one from Nars and one from Clarins. The NARS one is in Illicit. Now this is one of their newer shades. You just got a lovely shot of my nose there, hello. <laughs> I have actually been wearing this one a little bit and trying it out because I wanted to test it. It's supposed to be very close to my favorite juicer. I think I might like it a little bit more. Ooh, feels, feels bad to say that, but I do. And then this is my all time favorite blush ever. This is the Clarins um, Illuminating Cheek Color in Rosewood. Like so many of my all-time favorite things ever, they don't make this anymore. I've still luckily got, you know, a lot of this. It's just the perfect natural blush, pinky, warm color. It's so amazing. Um, so I think that was in my makeup bag because I pulled it out. I do that every so often just to use it, but I try to do it sparingly. Um, I'm going to put that one back in my makeup collection. But I am going to keep this one here, which does mean I'll have to use this powder brush for it, which is going to take up a bit more space. Um, but I think it's worth the sacrifice because I kind of sometimes like to use this over the top of a cream blush. It just sort of intensifies the color a bit. And these two are along the same lines. Okay. And then my two highlighters, I've got another nude sticks product here. This is the magnetic nude glimmers in 99% angel. And then I have the RMS living luminizer. Stunning. Um, I actually pulled this one out the other day because I was wanting a really subtle natural glow, which is what it does. It's very, very subtle. You know, you, you can't really see it, but it just does a little something perfect for a no makeup makeup look, um, but maybe not every day. This is the one that I would use. This is definitely the one I would pull out all the time. So that one I'm gonna keep. Okay, what do we have next? There's quite a few eye products in here actually. Oh, first of all, let's just put this away. This is the brow product I'm using. It's the only brow product I currently own. Um, it's the Anastasia Dip Brow Pomade. I always kind of fall in and out of love with this, but at the moment, I think more so because it's the only thing I can use, I'm kind of, I'm doing okay with it. It's serving me well. Um, not much more to be said about it than that. Okay, so eye products, we've got one here, here. These two are eyes. This is an eyeliner. <laughs> we've got, oh, actually a couple. Okay, I think that is it. So, there's quite a lot of stuff here. Um, mascaras. I keep two mascaras. That's just running away, isn't it? <laughs> I keep two mascaras usually in my makeup bag, although I now have three. This is my absolute go-to, the best mascara you will ever use. It's the By Terry Lash Expert Twist Brush. Um, this is kind of a bit of a funky novelty mascara in that you can twist the bottom of the brush and can you see that it changes the shape of it very wow very amazing however I never put it on the really stumpy one I always leave it on the long one and that to me is the perfect brush and um, combined with the perfect formula as well probably to give the most uh, open wide-eyed gorgeous like separated long lashes it's amazing I love it so much and there's nothing else that compares to it um, on my bottom lashes though, I do always reach for this. It's the Glossier Lash Slick. Um, something about this formula, I think it's a tubing mascara and it just does not budge. 
Um, I have always had such a problem with most mascaras, even this one, if I put it on my bottom lashes, I will look like a panda after an hour. It just smudges so bad. Um, but I've never had that problem with this one. And it's the perfect brush actually, and the perfect formula for bottom lashes. It's very subtle, it's very combing, just defines them nicely, but doesn't look too intense and too over the top. So, Glossier Lash Stick is also going to stay. This one I tried out again recently. It's a little sample from By Terry and it's their Mascara Terribly with a growth booster. So I tried this and, you know, from first use, I could kind of tell I wasn't going to love it. I'm not a massive fan of bristly brushes. I prefer it when they're plastic. And the formula, I'm not sure, you know, how much of a difference this will make growth wise. That's kind of an interesting part of it, but it just was not as thickening as I like. I need my mascara to be very thickening. That's just the look I'm used to. So um, for me, it wasn't very good. You're probably noticing a complete lack of eyeshadow. Um, usually I'll just pick something out of my drawer, use a palette, something like that. Or, you know, most of the time I just use my bronzer on my eyes and, and that's it. I'm not a massive eyeshadow wearer at all. I do have one kind of eyeshadow in here though. This is from Clarence. It's an ombre satin cream eyeshadow uh, in the shade Purple Rain. This is actually very, very nice. I'm so into these like dark chocolate um, rich brown colors. They're one of the main things that I gravitate towards if I am going to wear eyeshadow. This is interesting because it's like a cream to powder. So most of the time I will just grab my eyeshadow brush like this. I'll just like take the fluffy one, do that all over my lid, and then I'll take the shorter stumpier one and do that underneath. I'm going to actually put that one away just because I don't use it all the time. I think the last time I did was a good couple of weeks ago. So, you know, it's not an essential. Same probably should be said for this, um, which honestly I do use more than most eyeshadows. It's such a cool product. It's from Chanel. It's the Le Gel Paite Transparent Shimmering Gel. I feel like I have searched high and low for a product like this for years and years. Look how gorgeous that is. It's basically just a clear gel with this incredibly finely milled shimmer um, floating in it. And once this is on your eyes, you barely even notice the shimmer. But what it does is it gives the ultimate like wet look. It's a really nice balmy feeling too. So it's not sticky. My eyes never clump up or stick together. It doesn't disrupt my mascaras. Honestly, this is such an amazing novelty product. Um, and one that I feel like really, if you've been looking for a wet look, shadow this is what you've been searching for um i think it was a limited edition luckily it is a huge huge tub and i will honestly never ever run out of this ever in my life probably um which is a good thing i like just kind of tapping this onto my eyelids for every day just like a nice wet look simple easy glossy eye um but the problem with this is just it's so big and chunky it's really quite huge what can i give you for a size comparison here is my glossier balm.com um, so you can tell. I'll keep it nearby, I'll keep it in my drawer, but for now I'm gonna take that out of my bag. The rest are actually just eyeliners. I have two liquid liners, um, probably my two favorite liquid liners of all time. We've got the Guerlain eyeliner, I think that's what it's called. This is probably one of the more beautifully packaged things I own. It's so like 20s eyeliner, old Hollywood, beautiful. Um, and actually, if I can open it, it's the most intense, thick, black, like perfect liquid liner so rich you don't need to do more than one coat of this uh it goes really matte which is great i like it when an eyeliner is very matte and not glossy and it stays put all day honestly it's amazing um i say this today actually wearing eyeliner but it's not something that i reach for very often at all only if i feel like my makeup is just not working and i need to save it somehow so having two is probably not um the best use of space this one on the other hand is from glossier it's quite new from them it's called the pro tip i love this because it has a felt tip pen nib which is always just the easiest thing if you're kind of an eyeliner novice or, or you just find it really tricky most of the time to get a good wing or a good line, these felt tips will be amazing. This one's quite different because it's actually made up of very, very small brush hairs all put together, just like a brush tip. This is one of the best eyeliners I've ever used. Um, the easiest to do and the quickest, uh, and it gives a really similar effect actually to the Girl on one. It's not quite as intensely black. Um, so if you want that, I definitely stick to this. But for every day, for ease, I'm gonna keep this Glossier one in there. I've actually just noticed there's a few more brow products in here. And I think these two are 
a completely empty. I think I've been keeping this one around just to use for the brush, which is gross because it's all covered in hair and the makeup bag dust. Um, this one is from Maybelline. It's the Brow Precise. I'm not even sure what it's called because it's all rubbed off. And then also um, the Benefit Precisely My Brow Pencil, which is my go-to everyday brow pencil. This one's in the shade three, but um, similarly, it, it doesn't work anymore. So those, I don't know why they're still in there. They can go in the bin. This is still going miraculously. Again, it's one of those products that just has not given out on me yet. Um, all the packaging and branding has rubbed off of this, but it's from Anastasia, it's their brow gel. Best brow gel ever. It will set your brows like super glue, but if that is what you like, um, this is a winner. I've just realized I didn't talk about these eyeliners. Um, we've got the NARS Coal Liner in Sorrento, best eyeliner ever and also discontinued. And then the Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk Eyeliner, which I used recently in one of my makeup tutorials. Again, it was the glowing skin one. This is insane. It's like a chocolate brown, ready, just amazing, gorgeous eyeliner color. There is nothing I've ever seen like it. Um, the NARS one, I probably use more than this just because it's quite, you know, out there and a bit different. But saying that, pencil eyeliner, it's not something I reach for very often at all, um, unless I kind of want that very smudged, dark look. Maybe more so like on a date night or if I'm going out and I want you know, a bit more intensity to my makeup, I'll reach for these, but um, I'm probably gonna put them away for now because I, I know I won't use them that much. So, okay, there are surprisingly four, five, six lip products in here. Who would have thought it? Oh, but look what two of them are. What a, what a shock. These are actually different. So we've got London in here, which you guys know is my go to and then we have Abu Dhabi which I'm actually wearing today. I didn't realize there were two in my makeup bag and I've been pulling them out randomly and obviously wearing two different colors. Saying that they are incredibly similar. This is London which is like your peachy nudie brown and then Abu Dhabi. I think this just has a little bit more pink to it. I mean there's not a lot in that at all. Um, London's a bit darker, I think. Abu Dhabi's a bit lighter, but they're both very, very similar and I, I love them both. So yeah, they're staying, obviously, no question. I do have a different lip color in here, surprisingly. This is a Nude Sticks Magnetic Matte. Oh, nope, it's an eye color. <laughs> of course it is. Um, I remember putting this in actually to try it out because I thought it was really interesting for a cream eyeshadow. It's like very beigey and nudie and honestly does look like a lip product. I'm gonna keep that to try it actually because I still have yet to use it properly. Uh, we've got a lip liner in here. Sometimes I'll do a lip liner just if I feel like evening out my lips. Um, this one's from Charlotte Tilbury, it's Pillow Talk, of course. It's like the ultimate, your lips put better um, lip liner. And then I've got two Glossier lip products in here. Mangobalm.com of course will be staying. It's my favorite lip balm of all time. Uh, I always have this kicking about. It's the lip gloss. This is like such a throwback to secondary school and everybody would carry these around. Didn't suit me then, doesn't suit me now. I just, I can't get on board with like that really glossy lip look. It just, it doesn't work for me. I'm such a matte lip girl through and through. Um, so I'm gonna put that one back. And then really that's it. We have a couple of stragglers. Um, I think it's just these two. Lottie London Freckle Tint. This I use, you know what, every day actually, mostly because I forget to, but all the time. Gotta keep that. Uh, and then I have a perfume. I didn't realize this is in my makeup bag. It must've been at the bottom. It's quite hard. They just have like a little rollable perfume in all sorts of different places. That's what I like to tell myself anyway. The smell of this, oh my God. I can smell it already. It's Gucci Bloom. One of my favorite perfumes considering, um, I don't love florals, it's quite a big leap because this is the most florally, um, like powdery, heady scent ever, but it's so, so good. I actually wanna put some on now. Um, who loves a rollable? They're just the most handy things ever. Mm, so, so good. How much better does that look? It's almost half empty now. There is so much more space, which is great, especially when you have a bag this big. If it's not super full, you can just like rummage in it so much easier and everything is so much more in view um, and there to grab. All that I'll be adding is um, these one, two, three, four, five makeup tools once I have washed them. And that's it. That is my makeup bag decluttered.
I've just been sitting at my coffee table doing that on my knees. Oh my God, I'm getting old. Um, look at this, look at the difference. It's practically just fluffy now because there's just so little in it. How happy am I? What an amazing transformation. Okay, and that's it. Thank you guys for coming on this decluttering journey with me. I feel so much better having things organized. Um, so I, I really feel like this theme is gonna continue, uh, not only in my makeup, but in my clothing. Maybe we'll do some decluttering of kitchen cupboards as well, because God, that needs to be done. <laughs> Who else has a kitchen cupboard that they just throw things into and then shut the door quickly and run away because I do. Okay guys, um, so thank you so much for watching. I'm gonna leave my decluttering playlist somewhere, somewhere around here. If you wanna catch up on everything else that I've done uh, before in the past or more recently. Once again, I hope everybody is doing really well. Staying calm, you know, distracting yourself on YouTube as much as you possibly can. That is it from me. Thank you all so much for watching and tuning in as always. Um, and I will see you soon. Bye.